Look, it, it's it's the kids' map pants. It's how you know I mean business. This this is how you know it's a serious video. When I got the the kids' map pants. I don't know if you can see from here, but that's how you know that I mean serious business. <laughs> So as you guys may know, I live in Gerald, about 400 kilometers north of Perth in Western Australia. I've made so many videos pointing out that frankly, if you didn't know, you would either need to click the subscribe button now, or you would have had to repeat year nine in that low tier public school you went to, which is so critically underfunded that the extent to which you would have had to fail and force the school to reutilize its resources to help you would need to be in an extreme so cantankerous that even John Howard himself would have retroactively removed his cuts to school funding as Liberal Prime Minister of Australia out of sheer pity for your poor academic achievement. I may have ensured that essentially all schools have a, a print with a printer so stiff that even if you selected a colour, the image would come out and would appear to be an uncanny Mr. Incredible face. But upon seeing this random individual not know this obscure niece internet Australian shit poster on YouTube, I have seen the error of my ways and will now personally assassinate Scott Morrison in order to take back his seat and fix this appalling state of education in our uh, nation. Speaking of liberals, this video is about Melissa Price, the representative for Durack, where I live and have always lived. Everything North of Perth. If you were a poor pleb and didn't buy YouTube red like the loaded chad that I am, do you should be posers. Then you might be aware from the multitude of Clive Palmer ads that frankly make my little dark age video look like a rice harvesting documentary. Election season is coming up. You know, politics. Fun. I'm recording this now, I realise I am still wearing those Hello Kitty ears I put on for no reason earlier today. I'm not taking them off. So anyway, let's have a look at Melissa Price. Turns out if you live in a safe electoral seat your whole life in a party with a policy record that makes the financial management of people who take out nimble loans look like TF2 Australians, you can get a bit lazy about voting in the interests of your electorate. And Melissa Price is the perfect example of this. She's a terrible representative. And I am not just saying this because the alternative candidate Jeremiah Riley looks as if Giga Chad dedicated his alpha energies and land rights law instead of body sculpting. A voting record that toes the party line at exactly 100% in a political party run by the shiftiest mattest shooter the world has ever seen and a policy record you would expect from a man who is such a massive piece of sheep shit that he would rather downplay himself as the dag of a sheep instead. The list of bad things she's voted for is very long. So let's start here. For one, she voted in line with the Liberals to reduce media diversity. And no, she hasn't personally voted to reduce the amount of people of colour in my loom height videos so that my camera boy no longer exists. Noam Chomsky did that. Great. It's also how you make a great, great chicken, uh, chicken salad. <laughs> no. Australia has some of the lowest media diversity on earth, with the vast majority of media being owned either by Rupert Murdoch or Nine Fairfax. This means that functionally all information seen on mainstream media and a lot of prioritised information on platforms like YouTube, never heard of that one, I heard it's pretty good though is made by those two people. Things like Nine News, Sky News... Melissa Price also voted against a Royal Commission into Violence and Abuse Against People with Disabilities, directly in line with the party. A Royal Commission would have been able to produce effective ways to reduce the rate of abuse in the disability sector, where it is three times more likely to happen than overall. Something which every single member of the opposition at the time, Labour, voted to have. Every, everyone knows freedom to be heard and the welfare of our most vulnerable are but minuscule to the mantra of economy, economy, economy. What's the economy? I don't know, something to do with Bitcoin mining I hear. And a guy named Keynes? 
I think he's like Kanye's brother? I don't know. I'm a slug my mail. My main economic output is shit tier PowerPoint memes, and my primary input is whatever bakery item is about to go off at IGA. I'm a simple, unstoppable machine. Through an amendment to the Enterprise Tax Plan, Melissa Price voted with the Liberals' explicit plan to reduce the tax rate of major multinational companies. The policy did also plan to reduce the tax rate of small businesses, but if you have to pay the same amount of tax as BHP, Billiton and Kmart, then it's not exactly a fair plan. So I don't really care what people say, Kmart is miles shitter than Target. If Kmart was Rio Tinto, then Target is Fortescue Metals. I'm not sorry, having your checkout in the middle of the store is Kmart's version of blowing up ancient Aboriginal cave sites. Just put it at the front. I miss you, Joe, and Target. Please come back to Northgate. I have good memories. Do you see why Melissa Price is not a good representative for Jarek yet? Huh? Huh? electorate that gets a vast amount of its economic contribution from big resource companies like BHP and Woodside, you probably wouldn't be able to see it, as the next bill Price voted for, much like smoke does to glass, or I do in social situations, ensures that the dealings of those companies the party hangs around is very unclear. Back in 2015, Melissa Price voted for the better targeting the income tax transparency laws bill, which by the way is the shorthand for the bill. A fittingly dyslexic title, as it makes figuring out the incomes, ABNs, and other financial information in the public interest of big companies near impossible without some sort of spy movie grey corporate espionage. Even if corporate espionage does make for an epic action-packed movie, we in Australia wouldn't even be able to capitalise on that because we can't produce movies because guess what? Melissa Price and her party voted to refuse to fund any local Australian media. If anywhere in the country would be possible to capitalise on the fact that we have high rates of corporate espionage through media, it would actually be Western Australia, because guess what? Good Emperor, Mikey Boy McGowan, did put funding into Western Australian movie production. Yes, they're true Western propaganda world. Move away from Chomsky's Hollywood and say hello to Western Australian propaganda systems. Manufacturing sitcoms since 2022. Some of you might not be aware of what the Western propaganda model is and that I am making completely obscure and unknown references to a completely incorrect audience. To that I say the classic Numenite saying of FIFO, No, not fitting or fuck off. Find it a YouTuber fucking sucked in. Oddish. Are you a sucker for free speech and all that jazz? I have no idea how you can actively support free speech when people who think debating which evolution they would find most attractive of Austrian men on Google Plus believe they have a right to talk about the actions of people in Parliament. But if your beliefs are truly that unshakable, then you might be abhorred to know that the Liberal Party is infamous for silencing members of Parliament who speak out against their actions and incompetencies. Melissa Price is no exception. She has voted to silence opposition leader Anthony Albanese from scrutinising the Liberals' management of aged care during COVID-19. She even voted to stop the voice of fellow rural MPs like Warren Snowden of the Lingari electorate. You know, that Lingari. Um, where the fuck's my guitar? I am immensely dehydrated right now. Th this... This Lignaro from the... From the little things, big things grow. From the little things, big things grow. You know, that, that Vincent Lignaro. No? Okay. If you want to represent a rural electorate, you should be voting in the interest of rural people. Not voting to have them silenced to the preference of a party funded more than any other party by big companies with goals that are at best ideologically broad and stagnating. And what is most likely and worse, non-existent and short-sighted. That's why the only option is to vote number one weed party, the true Greens of Australia. I'm, I'm kidding by the way, I'm not exactly a fan of weed, I already have a video on that. Hey, kid, you still think the two parties are two sides of the same coin? If you're really that much of a dunce, then you have probably fallen fully to the same fate of stupidity I have. 
which is either due to the inherent chance that we all products of Tasmanian incest, or it's because Melissa Price has attempted to make access to higher education than watching a multiplication wrap in year four significantly more expensive. Un unrelated, but if the two parties were the same coin, what coin would they be? I bet it's one of those fourth gen Pokemon ca card flipping coins, where the Liberal Party is represented by Palkia, the ruler of all space, contained by Robert Menzies' massive gut, and the Labour Party is like Dialga, ready to unleash Whitlam from the grave of another It's time for old folks It's time, it's time <laughs> Oh, alright, oh, right, right, right. <clears throat> Education funding Price has voted in line of a party in 2014 and 2015 for the Higher Education Research Reform Amendment Bill which would see university fees deregulated allowing universities to play literal rim world as your organs may need to be harvested in order to afford a high demand job I can just imagine it now. There'll be this university plan, right? Where you can, you can get your job to become a doctor, but then your hex debt is replaced with once you're a doctor, you've got to perform gut surgery on yourself to extract your own lung and then give it to the university and that's half your debt paid. There was more. But I got into words with multiple syllables and given I still unironically tout Andy Griffith's bum again as sophisticated literature, I was unable to pass through that policy further. There is significantly more on Melissa Price's voting patterns and how she has simply not placed her interests in line with the people of Durak, such as voting against simple and effective measures to prevent sexual harassment in the workplace, voting against the increase of legal aid for family violence cases, keeping a court a rich person's game essentially. The classic liberal pattern of voting against increasing the aged pension, something that they never talk about, but always do. Oh, and the rort that is cashless welfare, which gives $10,000 per person on the Indu card to a company that used to be headed by a former Liberal Party member. I can't talk in great detail about these voting patterns because the video I have written is now reached the fourth page of my Google document. I am reading it as we speak. It is quite a miracle that I've never seen before. It is literally unheard of in the Loom High universe. I was frankly unsure until now that my laptop even had the processing power to handle a four page document, given I put two IGA ice packs under it to prevent it overheating. So this is my view of Melissa Price. She is a Canberra girl through and through. I'll see you all next time. Take care. Ciao.